Okay, hello everyone. This is definitely going to stir some people up. I'm sorry. But yeah, I'm going to share this one. F false memory. Who is Fiona Broom? Fiona Broom is a theorist that proposed the Mandela effect when she feels the collective false memories are a result of the alternative re versions of the universe we live in. But who is she? Here we tell the story of Fiona Broom and offer insight as to why she writes about the strange events in our world. Now, this has been around this thing for a long time. Um, I remember my grandfather talking about it in the 80s and they used to call it Time Zero back then. I don't know why it was called Time Zero, but it was called Time Zero. Her story. Okay, she claims she stumbled into ghost hunting when she was a child. Her mother was an artist and her father was a photographer, calligrapher and a political artist activist. So Jean Poole certainly provided her with the creativity and talent for seeing the world in a different way. The home is also filled with artists, museum creators, diplomats, professionals and inventors. She lived in a daydream mix of travel parties, museums and skiing in the winter, seaside cottages in the summer. She had a life of wonder and wanted to discover amazing things. She wanted to be delighted, so she claims not to have an inbuilt drive to pursue the tragic. She claims it's just that tragic forms part of her ghost hunting experiences. Her first stumble into the ghost hunting happened to, at a hotel in Wentworth by the sea. Fiona and her brother followed a woman in an old-fashioned maid's uniform when she disappeared on the upper floor. Then she read a wrinkle in time, and her interest in the fantastical was cemented. When Fiona started out on the internet, it was free of useful ghost hunting sites. Therefore, her first website, Hollow Hill, was unique. It offers useful how-to sites that led to multiple invitations to investigate haunted sites. Choosing the, to write about these events was by chance or even a hobby. It was an extension of her journalistic career. She was writing for the Fate magazine at the start of her career. She is now working in a scientific and historical researcher as, while advertising, advising TV researchers. On shifting ideas about haunted locations, she continues to add to her collection of ghost hunted Ghost-related articles, she also works as a speaker and panellist at international events. Broom's work in paranormal activity. Broom seeks to offer unique in insights to paranormal research on haunted sites. She writes how-to books about ghost hunting. She started work as a journalist, but has developed her career to become an author of books in science and paranormal research. As a researcher, she brings together a small, selectively chosen team to investigate intriguing sites that may be haunted. She explores the locations of obscure ghost stories, those places that the public rarely hear about. She seeks to go well beyond the popular legends. She finds it important to discover truth, even if it means debunking long-held views of paranormal activity. Broom and the Mandela Effect. In 2010, Broom dubbed the phenomenon of collective shared false memory as the Mandela Effect. Fiona Broom held a collective mistakenly shared memory that Mandela had died in the 1980s when he actually died in December 2013. She claimed that she had evidence that the same memory was shared perhaps thousands of people around the world. Broom claims that she we could recount news coverage of the death about African President Nelson Mandela dying. She even remembers a speech from his widow about the death. Yet none of these events happen. Now Broom, having these memories by herself, confused and misinformed. However, like Broom, many other people who thought the same as her, including the same of exact details she remembered from this experience, she said the same mistaken memory started being discussed. It was labelled the Mandela Effect. The effect is often labelled as pseudoscientific. Broom has brought to the mind of researcher and the writer of created explanation for these glitches in the people's memory using the work of quantum physics. The glitch in the matrix is seen as a consequence of the existence of a multiverse. In other words, there are many universes playing out at the same time. She speculated that all these realities exist but separately in a parallel state. Consequently, Broom insists that her shared memory isn't fake, but instead she's part of a group of members of different pasts. The alternative past played out in a parallel universe that followed a different timeline. The theory is that somehow the universe got crossed with our universe and the false memory was implemented. Although labelled pseudoscientific by many, this theory is based on solid and respective research that is championed by none other than the physicist Edwin Schrodinger, based on mind-bending physics. 
He persuaded many that the cat could be alive and dead at all probabilities in the middle at the same time and only the act of disturbing and determining all the outcome. The multiverse theory was explained from this premise and it was felt that until seen, all realities existed. It's maybe, it is maybe that these theories are not easily testable in science. However, the links to popular media such as Star Trek, Star Wars make it difficult to separate from fiction. However, the overlap between science fiction and fact should never be diminished. Okay, so what is the do a domino effect? I'm sure you've heard of the domino effect before. The best way of understanding the domino effect is to visualize a chain of dominoes standing a few centimeters apart from each other, following a specific pattern or a single line. When you knock one domino over, it falls and hits the next and so on and so on, creating a chain of falling pieces which are each linked to an indoctrinated into the chain on both sides. Leaving a larger gap between the two dominoes can cause the chain to break, with the visual domino effect relying on consistency. The domino effect, as it's become known, takes the visual representation and puts it into something that reflects the movement of life. It refers directly to events which occur as a result of events which have already happened, or have, which are ready to happen, creating a cumulative effect where one thing leads to another and another and so on. This chain relation reaction can be positive or negative and can change the way plays out, life plays out for one or many people. Real life examples of the domino effect. A real exa life example and very common example of domino effect is where which one typically regarded as a negative example is the accumulation of debt and the idea that once you are in debt you will continue to dig yourself deeper and deeper into debt as long as you attempt to borrow from one source to pay off another. On a more positive note, another example of the domino effect is the cumulative impact of the investing in your own health can have. When you decide to eat more healthily and your fitness and health increases and your tendency to fall ill decreases, these are all kind of knock-on effects of that one decision to eat more healthily and so can be direct reaction of the domino effect. Some other popular examples include some other popular examples of interesting and unbelievable domino effects throughout history include the creation of YouTube was an effect of a wardrobe malfunction in 2004 during a performance at the Super Bowl. Janet Jackson's top slip when the eventual creators of YouTube went online to look for a clip, they couldn't find one, so they quit their jobs and set up a video streaming site. Prince Arthur got tuberculosis and this led to the creation of a new religion, the Church of England. When the prince son Henry got tuberculosis, he died, so his brother became their heir to the throne and married Prince Char Princess Sha Catherine. When he later wanted an annulment, the Pope said no, so he went up and set an alternative religion, calling himself the head Church of England. The domino effect and the Mandela effect. The Mandela effect, meanwhile, refers to the false memories and the idea that different people from all corners of the world believe in different versions of false memories which relate to very real events, movies, pop culture references. But how does this lead to the domino effect? Pretty simple. This is all direct result as a chain of reaction effect which is created by the simple single event, tapping into one of the popular theorists behind Mandela effect. Look at it this way, if one person recalls a certain movie quote or a song or a lyric or even a specific event, or even some incorrect detail, but they are able to tell the story with enough conviction that the people believe they are right, their false memory will quickly suppress and create a ripple effect through their network and local community very quickly that one false memory will multiply and create a domino effect where more people believe in the accuracy, giving weight to the Lindy effect at the same time, which states that the longer a false memory is given to a set C, the longer lasting it will become in the future. When a domino effect is allowed to take hold of a Mandela effect example and cause it to grow a mass, greater following, so the false memory becomes harder to reject. And that's not the only way the domino effect connects to the Mandela effect using the domino effect to explore the Mandela theories. Some of the most interesting and controversial theories which link to the Mandela effect can be attributed to the domino effect, which, because it this which allows one small suggestion or a linked linking to grow, inkling, sorry, to grow and multiply into something resembling a theory or conspiracy. The parallel, parallel universe theory, for example, is one which could have been hinted at many by a theorist. And as most people heard about it 
and add their own examples into the mix, the theory would have continued to grow and pick up wider following. The same is true of time travel theory, as well as other false memory theories themselves. And let's not forget the entire conception of the Mandela effect is only widely recognised and is possible because of the form of the Dynamo effect, where one incident relating to the death of Nelson Mandela has been used to fuel the creation of an entire theory based on a false memory. The takeaway. The domino effect refers to the cumulative impact that one event can have on the way that future events play out. This leads neatly into not only the spread of a certain Mandela effect examples and theories, but the very existence of the theory at all. What examples of the domino effect can you identify either in your own life or the stories you've seen online? Wikipedia classify it in psychology as a false memory, as a phenomenon where someone recalls something that did not happen or recalls it differently from the way it actually happened. Suggestively, activation or association information, the incorporation of misinformation and the source of misattributed have been suggested to be several mechanisms underlying the variety of types of false memory phenomena. False memories can be sometimes be shared by multiple people. One prominent example comes from a 2010 study that examined people familiar with the clock at the Bigunta Central Railway Station, which was damaged in the Bulba Borgonia massacre bombing in August 1980. In a study, 92% of respondents falsely remembered the clock had remained stopped since the bombing when, in fact, the clock was repaired shortly after the attack. Years later, the clock was once again stopped and set the time of the bombing in observance and the commemoration of the bombing. Other examples included memories of the title of Brandstein Bears, the children's book being spelled Brandstein, the logo of clothing brand, Fruit of the Loon, featuring Cornucopia, the existence of a 1990s movie on the title Shazam, starring the comedian Sinbad is gone. Um, there's a video I've got on my Twitter where there's a man and he has the book of with the eye, um, E in it, and as he comes, he films it, and as he comes out of his bedroom, and he, I think he did it as a live stream to prove that he wasn't editing it, and as he came out of the bed bedroom, it changed from an E to an A. And when he walked back into the bedroom, it changed from an A to an E. And yeah, he did it in a live stream to prove he wasn't editing it. In 2010, the shared false memory phenomenon was dubbed the Mandela Effect by a self-described paranormal consultant, Fiona Broom, in reference to a false memory in the death of South African anti anthropoid leader Nelson Mandela in prison in the 1980s. He actually died in 2013 after having served as president of South Africa from 94 to 99. Well, in my life, he actually died in 1993. Um, and it's hard to ask my family because we all sat down. We only had two TV stations back then, and it was the only thing that they were showing on TV, and my brother was a staunch supporter of Mandela. So we can't really fight about it in my family because we all remember him dying then, so I don't know. Um, which he claimed was shared by thousands, perhaps thousands of people. Some scientists suggest that these... Examples of false memories shaped by similar cognitive factors affecting people's multiple people and families, such as social and cognitive reformation and incorrect memories, or false news reports and misleading photographs that influence the information of shared memories based on them. For example, the false memories of Shazam have been similarly exclaimed as cloboflabation of memories. In psychology, a conflabble nation is a memory error defined as the production of fabricated, distorted or misinterpreted memories about oneself of the world. People who comfortable present incorrect memories ranging from subtle altercations to bizarre fabrications yeah, and generally very confident about their okay, of memories, possibly including the comedian wearing a genie-like costume during the TV presentation of Sinbad the Silent Movies in 1994. The 90 film Kazam featured a genie playing the Shaquille O'Neal and late 1960s m a series about a genie called Shazam. If you're unfamiliar with the term Mandela Effect, then you're not alone. Many people have never heard of it. But the chances are that the majority most likely experienced it or have been affected by it. The Mandela Effect is a phenomenon that occurs when a large group of people collectively 
remember an actual event. This may sound strange to you, but when you look at some of the many examples listed below, you might find that you too remember a certain detail of a specific historical event, a name, a mass cultural event, or a famous phase or other mistakenly, just like many other people do. Read on to find out everything Okay. Uh, whether you've become a victim, they call it. Uh, Gosh, they like to put labels on people, don't they? Everyone has to have a label put on them. So where does the term Mandela Effect come from? The term Mandela Effect was coined by a paranormal consult, Fiona Broom, as self-identified herself. It began with Broom realising that she had believed in the anti-anthropod revolutionary philanthropist and later on, South African President Nelson Mandela died. We read that earlier. He passed away on the 5th of December 2013. At the age of 95, after a series of illness, serious illnesses, he became father of the nation. He became president of the country, called father of the nation. She remembered him dying in jail. So at a conference in 2009, Fiona Broom spoke to guests about her memories on the event and found other people vividly remember the details just like she did. She proceeded to create a website that elaborated on the phenomenon, which is now known as the Mandela Effect. The actual term is believed to have first appeared in the New York Times crossword puzzle in June 2019. Mandela Effect definition used for the crossword puzzle was a re recent refinement of a false memory that typically refers to pop culture or current event reference. The effect has grown into a movement by believers in the existence of alternate realities where those events actually happen, which is the reasoning behind the Mandela effect. Although this theory is quite, sounds quite interesting, some of the theories about, parallel uni about other parallel universes and alternative realities have overtaken the inter internet and many people around the globe believe in this ex explanation. Scientists and doctors in cognitive psychology and neuroscientists have more rational explanations of the phenomenon by referring it to as collective false memories, confabulations, false memories, or honest lying. It's also referred to as a misinformation effect or something to deja vu. A plausible explanation behind the actual collective false memory about the death of Nelson Mandela could be a fact that in those years, like 1980s and other famous South African anthropod activist and revolutionary Steve Biko died. But the world is full of people who support another theory linked to the Large Hadron Collider, as well as the Flat Earth and other conspiracy theories. Why do they have to throw the Flat Earth in when they talk about that stuff? I suppose it's just to throw you off. If you're still not sure you understand how this phenomenon works, and affects human beings, or you remember clearly when Nelson Mandela died, here are some of the most common Mandela effects examples which you can check out to see whether you've been affected too. We all have attempted to provide some reasoning and plausible explanations for these common misconceptions which could explain the Mandela effect meaning. Here are some examples, uh, famous Mandela examples. Uh, common movie, TV, pop culture, collective false memories. Luke, I am your father. Do you remember the moment when Darth Vader tells Luke Skywalker, Skywalker, Luke, I am your father? Well, if you remember it, then you may be suffering from the common distorted memory because the actual phrase from Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back episode is, No, I am your father. The Looney Tunes logo. Do you remember the famous Bugs Bunny, Porky Pig, Tweety, Sylvester, Duffy Duck and other ca adorable cartoons? characters from the Looney Tunes series of Warner Brothers. Well if you do then you're mistakenly you're mistaken about the spelling because the TV show was not called Looney Tunes but rather Tunes. Excuse me, pardon me, sorry. Well if you do then you are mistaken about the spelling because the TV show was not called Looney Tunes but rather Looney Tunes. This is a very common mistake and it can be due to the association of the word cartoons and tunes as well as the double O and the word loony. The evil queen from Snow White and the Seven Doors, I'm not gonna say that phrase. Who is not gonna say it. It's probably it's probably one of the first that comes to mind if you've ever watched Disney's animation Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. If it is the phrase which the evil queen asked and repeated like the mantra at the beginning of the story. But believe it or not, the actual wording is not but rather it's another common misconception, they say. 
Bernstein Bears. Do you recall watching the Bernstein Bears as it, or reading their books when you were young? Well, it may come to a surprise to many of you, but the name of the bears in the series is actually spelled Brian Stain instead of Stein. Famous droid on Star Wars. When asked to describe a funny and smart droid from the saga just called CP C three PO, you'll probably say an all gold protocol droid. But the fact is all three episodes of the original trilogy directed by George Lucas, the charismatic robot as silver coloured right leg from the knee down. This is a detail that even some of the diehard Star Wars fans have wrongly overlooked. But yes, the truth is that his leg underneath the right knee is silver in colour, has always been silver throughout the original trilogy. Due to the mirror effect, when the silver part of the leg had on camera, the producers of the new series decided to fit C3 PO with an all gold body instead, and it added a red arm in The Force Awakens. Tom Cruise dancing on the pantless and risky business. This fun dance from the movie Risky Business is among the most recognisable in the history of the cinema. The scene depicts a young Tom Cruise dancing in his underwear and dress shirt, pantless, with white socks on, wearing red band glasses. This is a look that has been copied by numerous celebrities and originally ordinary folks and is among the most popular Halloween and other costume party looks. If you remember the scene exactly as described, then you could be a victim of one of the most common effects. The truth is that Tom Cruise is dancing in this cult scene without pants, but he is where well, the truth is that Tom Cruise is dancing in this cult scene without his pants, but he is wearing but he is without his Rayburn glasses either. The mistake is most probably due to the famous poster in the movie where Cruz is wearing iconic Ray-Bans. Hannibal Lecter's Hello Charlie in the Silence of the Lambs. So Anthony Hopkins playing the role of genius uh, evil cannibal called Hannibal Lecter in the Silence of the Lambs movie is among the most incredible memorable roles by any actor ever in the history of cinema. Do you remember him turning to a young p person named Clarence? played brilliantly by Jodie Foster with the creepy words, Hello, Clarice. The reality is that Hannibal Lecter's character actually says, Good morning, instead of Hello, Clarice. In this iconic scene where the two meet, he does it in a terrifying, melodic voice, which sounds in the same every time he says it in the name Clarice throughout the film, which is probably the reason why many people remember the phrase wrong. Forrest Gump's famous Life is a Box Like a Box of Chocolates movie line. 95, Forrest Gump won six Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director for Robert Zemeckis, Best Actor and Leading Role, Tom Hanks. Remains one of the most popular and most loved feel-good movies of all times. Well, most people who watched it back then remember and quote Forrest Gump with his cult phrase like, Life's like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. However, true and deep meaning of these words have, many people still get the quote wrong. And at the end, Forrest says, Life is like a box of chocolates and not is. Leonardo DiCaprio's Best Oscar win. Many people still believe that the talented actor received his first Academy Award for Best Actor in Leading Role long before DiCaprio actually did. The truth is he was nominated for a whole four Oscar nominations for some of the best, his most brilliant roles until the Academy awarded him with the Oscar for his role in The Revenant in 2016. The shared untrue memory is probably due to the multiple nominations for which he had received throughout the years and all the times when he was considered for the front-runner for the Academy Award but was not actually awarded. Sally Field's famous Academy Award with its acceptance speech. The famous scene in which Halle, Sally Fields receives an award for her performance in Places in the Heart in 1985 will probably be remembered more vividly than the film itself. Most people remember the exciting actress saying, you like me? You really like me? While well, the true words she was saying during this memorable emotional speech are, I can't deny the fact that you like me right now. You like me. I don't know how. Okay. Lucy's Spoilings. I lie, love Lucy. Undoubtedly, one of the most loved comedy shows in the history of TV in the USA, I Love Lucy, has made many generations laugh throughout the years. Viewers and fans of the show may remember the Ricky Ricardo catchphrase, Lucy, you have me splendid to do. The fact is the actual phrase said, 
was Lucy Splane, or Lucy Splane, if you can, instead. I think Splane might be as in explain because she was always screwing up things. The name of Gremlin. Remember Spike from the cult horror comedy movie The Gremlins? If so, then you're like many other viewers who remember the Gremlin named Spike when he was actually named called Stripe instead. The spelling of the Flintstones. Do you remember Yabba Dabba Doo? The funny Stone Age cartoon family, the Flintstones? Well, you, you should know that the actual name of the family has another T in it instead of... And it is Flintstones rather than just Flintstones. Okay. Flintstones. Meet the Flintstones. That's, okay, that's weird. The name comes from the words Flint and stone, so the two T's, and it makes sense, but most common of us remember how the name was pronounced, which is the reason for this common distorted memory. Gandalf crying out, run you fools! The dramatic scene from Lord of the Rings actually portrays Gandalf saying, fly you fools, rather than run you fools. It is believed that the author of the book, Tolkien, used the words fly as a synonym for flee, or run away, which explains the wording. Corella from 101 Dalmatians. Remember the evil designer Corella, who portrayed brilliantly by Glenn Close in the 1996 Disney movie, trying to make coats from the cute 101 Dalmatians? Well, you probably remember that her name is Corella Deville. Actually, the right spelling is Corella Deville, Deville, in reference to the devil, which is pretty good description of the high fashion designer. Sex and City's TV hit series. One of the favorite TV series that ran. Which ran on HBO for years and is loved by fans to this day is often remembered and referred to the name Sex in the City. The real name of the series show is Sex and the City. The Shazam movie. If you grew up in the 90s, the chances are you remember comedian Sinbad in the role of hilarious genie and his flick title Shazam. This is a common collective mistake in memory because there was no movie under this name. The fact is, in 96, there was a family movie called Kazams with Shaquille O'Neal in the role of genie. The possible explanation for this common mistake is that Sinbad did star in similar flicks during those years, and in fact that Kazam Genie movie was in the previews in most of those tapes with those films. Oh my gosh, is that the excuse? Also, the movie poster of the House Guest movie starring Sinbad decap decapitated, depicted him coming out of a mailbox, which somewhat resembles a genie coming out of a lamp. And last but not least, the comedian was pictured hosting a celebrity event dressed like a genie, but there's no picture of it called Shazam. Oh my gosh, they're going to extremes for these uh, easy explanations they're trying. Uh, the theme song from Mr. Rogers' Neighbourhood. You remember the catchy theme song from the children's program, right? Many recall it saying it's a beautiful day in the neighbourhood, but actually the exact words are it's a beautiful day in this neighbourhood. The cult MASH TV series, many people evidently have a memory of one of its main characters from the cult war comedy series MASH, Walter Ra Radar O'Reilly, who was played by Jerry Brogoff getting killed off somewhere in the middle of the series. The truth is, the character remained alive and appeared in the TV show up to the 8th season. His character appeared in the movie of the same name based on the series. Curious George and his long curved tail. If you've read Margaret and H.A. Ray's book series about Curious George, chances are you have memories of a cute monkey having a long curved tail. Truth is, in the illustrations of Curious George, didn't have a long tail at all in the books. Pikachu's tail colour. Speaking of tails in animated characters, there are many viewers who clearly call Pokemon's character Pikachu having a black zigzag pattern on his yellow tail. But if you search the internet for pictures, you will see you for yourself. Pikachu has an all yellow tail and your memories are incorrect. Cinderella Castle in Disney World. When was the last time you went to Disney World? Do you recall what the castle looked like? Uh, do you recall where the castle was located? Numerous people have a shared memory of the castle being right by the entrance. The truth is that it's located beyond Main Street in the Magic Kingdom. Ed McMahon is the face of publishers Clearinghouse Sweepers Sweepstakes. Many pe viewers swear on having a memory of watching Ed McMahon arriving as part of the prize patrol at people's doors with huge checks for winning the publishers Clearinghouse Sweepstakes. Whether today's show, tonight's show, 
Star never took part in such events and was actually an endorser of the competitive sweet stakes organised by the American Family Publishers. Queen's famous song. It was last year's huge success of the Queen's bio movie Bohemian Rhapsody. Most people are listening to Queen more than ever. Many of the old and some of the new fans are absolutely sure that the original song We Are The Champions ends with the line of the world, but the actual film, the phrase is missing. The truth is that there are some videos from live appearance of Freddie Mercury and the band where the singer does add the phrase at the end, but if you are looking for the original lyrics or from the song where it was first released on the News of the World LP in 1977, then this phrase is missing from the text. From common political and historical false collective memories, the number of passengers in the limousine during JFK assassination, trying to remember, remember the answer from the top of your head how many people were in the car with JFK and Jackie and Kennedy when he was shot in Dallas. Even if you were not born when this happened, you've surely seen footage or photos or watched documentaries about the films and the tragic event. If your answer to the question is four, then you were wrong and could have been affected by the phenomenon. Many people remember that there were four people in the car, including the driver and the seat service officer in the front seat, and JFK and Jackie on the back seat. Truth is, there were six people in the car at that moment. From Apart from the driver, there was also the Secret Service agent on the front seats, and also the Texas governor at the time, John Conley, and his wife, Nellie. The common misconception may be due to the fact that the limousine they had were in hand, uh, unusual seating with two additional jump seats. Also, many of the photos and footage taken during the right after the shooting were shot from angles that hit the middle rows of the seats where the governor and his wife were sitting. That's strange. Man in front of the tank, Tiananmen Square. The image of a man standing in front of the tank during the Tiananmen Square protest, which shook communist China back in 1989, is one of the most famous photos of the last century. People remember seeing the footage, remember the man actually getting run over by the tank. That's what I remember, my mum remembers. The fact is, the man, who was still identified, did stay in place while the army tank dangerously got close to him, but the tank stopped and was removed from members of the army forcibly out of the way. Even though this man still remains unidentified, he was never harmed and definitely not killed during the protest. During that. People swear that they can remember the most famous missionary of the 20th century, Mother Teresa, getting canonized or declared a saint by the Pope. Yes, I do. But the fact is, she was declared a saint on 4th of September 2016 by Pope Francis years after she passed away in 97. The Albanian Indian Roman Catholic nun who spent most of her life helping the dying and the poor was often referred to as a living saint while she was alive, which is the possible reason behind the commonly believed untrue memory. Well, we called her a saint because she um, baptised my nephew who was born premature and had cerebral palsy, um, weighed the size of a Coke can, and she blessed him when she visited the Brisbane Martyr Children's Hospital. The death of the first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong. Oddly enough, many people do not have a clear memory of the news of the passing of one of the famous people on Earth, Neil Armstrong. The astronaut, who was the first human to set foot on the moon, passed away August 12th, uh, August 2012, at the age of 82, most people do not remember hearing the news or were surprised to read about it years later when the news about the anniversary of his death come about. The death of Reverend Billy Graham. Many people claim to clearly remember the widely televised funeral of a famous evangelist, Billy Graham, being about 10 years or more ago. The fact is that the Reverend passed away just two years ago in February 2018. Death of actor Abe Vigola. Although the fame, false news is considered to be a recent, relatively recent phenomenon, the news of the death of famous actor A. Villago spread throughout the years several times, and he was still alive and well. Sadly, he passed away in 2016, but people remember hearing or reading about his death many years earlier. The Lindenberg kidnap, baby kidnapping case. The case became real media sensation in 1932 when the baby of a popular aviator, Charles Lindenberg, got kidnapped. A large majority of the people remember the case remained a cold case and was never solved, but the historical fact is that the body of the baby was found two months after the kidnapping. The killer was caught and consequently sentenced to death. Patrick Swayze's cancer butter. 
battle. Some people remember that the actor beat his pancreatic cancer and recovering from it. The unfortunate fact is Patrick Swayze passed away from the season 2009. The explosion of the Challenger Space Shuttle. One of the most horrifying live television events of the last century, the explosion of the Challenger right after takeoff happened the 28th of January 1986. Many people though claim to have a memory of the incident happening two or more years earlier. One previous reason behind the common false collective memory is that the shuttle did have a previous successful mission before the tragic incident in 1986. The Mona Lisa smile. This is one of the most famous conspiracies and theories regarding the Mandela effect and it consists of multiple people actually believing that the famous painting by Leonardo DiCaprio Vinci depicted Mona Lisa with a much more obvious smile in the past. Others believe that she is frowning, not smiling. Expert met- experts maintain that the facial expression of one of the most famous painted ladies is a smirk. Others claim that this is a self-portrait of genius da Vinci himself. I always thought it was a smirk. Chartreuse, pink or green. There's no pl- plausible explanation why there are so many people who remember Chartreuse being a magnet magnetic pink colour when it's actually the name of green yellow hue. Chateau Rouge comes from the name of liqueur that has a specific green yellow colour. New Zealand's location. Many people who rely on the question where New Zealand is located with the answer northeast from Australia. The reality is New Zealand is located in a southeastern direction from Australia. Some people clearly remember that New Zealand was located northeast and others remember Australia being located further south on the so-called old world map of the earth. Possible explanation for this scientific specific example in the, is a mix of collective false memories and bad maps or not paying enough attention during the geography class. I've got some of those maps where they talk about this stuff. I've still got the number of US states. You may have seen strange to you, but there are a lot of people who believe that the number of states in the USA is more than 50. In fact, they claim that there are 52 or 53. This is most commonly due to the addition of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands to the territory of the U.S. Common brand name Mandela Effect example, Skeeter's Shoes. The foot name brand Skeeter's is very widely recognized, but there are many people who think that there are the name Skeeter's rather than Skeeter's. The latter is the right spelling and that there's no T in the name. Oscar Mayer's Hot Dogs, another shared and erroneous memory which many people have, is that the name of popular meat brand, Oscar Mayer, but in actuality it was Oscar Mayer with a Ford logo. Have you ever noticed the little tail, the F, the Ford logo? Well, if you haven't, you're not alone. But if you think it's a new addition to the famous logo, then you're mistaken as well. The additional curl element to the letter F was added back in the 90s. The possible explanation Behind this common misconception is the fact that many people are used to the original F letter without this embellishment and still haven't paid close attention to the Ford's logo since it was changed nearly 30 years ago. Jiffy Peanut Butter. Do you recall Jiffy Peanut Butter brand, which was the most popular ones in the USA in the early 1990s? 80s, sorry. Well, there is a popular pe- there is a brand of peanut butter which was first introduced back in 1958 and still in existence, but is named. Jiff, not Jiffy. This is a common misconception, often referred to as the Mandela effect, and according to experts, it's probably due to a mix-up of other popular brands of the same product in the early years was called Skippy. So people have mixed up these two up in the middle name, Jiffy. For Bree Spray, many people get the spelling wrong for the popular odour removal spray for bees. They believe it was spelled for bees instead. This makes sense, given the association with the fresh smell in the breeze. Oh, gosh. Corny. Fruit Loops, common mistake that people still make, calling the favourite breakfast cereal called Fruit Loops instead of the name Fruit Loops. The logo f- of the Fruit of the Loom. Do you visualise a basket or a coconut corner up here with fruits in it when you try to recall the Fruit of the Loom logo? Well, if you do, maybe you're one of the many people who falsely remember the logo, including any other item than the actual pile of the fruit depicts on it. White out, you may recall the popular white correction fluid which was used back when there were typewriters and handwritten notes as white out, but it's actually spelt white out, W-I-T-E, not W-H-I-T-E. Kit Kat, famous candy bar, many recall as Kit Kat or as Kit Kat, 
it's a hyphen in the middle, but the brand is actually Kit Kat with no hyphen. Cheese it another popular example of the Mandela effect, the brands is the memory of Cheese It, when the actual name of the snack is Cheese It with the hyphen. Double stuff Oreo. Many Oreo lovers believe that their favourite double stuff cookies are double called double stuff Oreo, but the fact is the name is Double Stuff Oreos instead. The Smoky Bear ad. Do you recall the Smoky Bear being one of the advertising icons? The fact is Smoky Bear was a character depicted in public announcement for wildfire prevention rather than advertising a specific brand or company. The Rich Uncle Penny bands and his monocle from the Monopoly game. Close your eyes and picture the mascot of Monopoly board game. Rich Uncle Penny Bags, better known as the Monopoly Man. Do you see him wearing a top hat and a monocle? If you do, then you're one of the large number of people who mistakenly remember and depict it with a monocle. The probable reason behind this common misconcurrence is the fact that there is similar looking animated character who is the mascot of planters and his name is Miss Peanut, who is depicted with a top hat and wearing a monocle. No way! No way! What are the m most common theories explaining the Mandela Effect? If you have recognised yourself as one of the people who have mistaken memories of a certain event or fact from our list, you may be dying to find out what the actual explanation behind it is. What is the Mandela Effect actually? Here are some of the most common theories and explanations for the curious effect. The multiverse. Originator of the term, Fiona Broom explains the Mandela Effect as a cause by multiverse. She believes in the existence of the multi-parallel universe and the alternative rel realities where the events and people differ. The Mandela effect, according to her, occurs when these parallel realities happen to cross paths accidentally and this causes the false shared memories to happen. Fiona Broom created the website that explores her theory and there are multiple supporters of the idea of the parallel universe and realities existing, as well as time travelling and certain events that have evoked the crossing of the paths in between these totally different realities and universes. This theory may sound quite far-fetched, stretched, and even served to some, but there is no way that it can be scientifically rebuked at this moment. The false memory-related concept theories. Scientists, including psychologists, doctors, and neurologists, believe that the reason for the occurrence of the Mandela phenomenon is mainly due to the general unreliability of the human memory. The unreliability, according to them, is due to the close proximity of the neurons in the brain which collect information about certain events and store it, but can get it mixed up during, due to wrong neural connections. In other words, when our brain receives and stores new information, this may sometimes cause the previously stored information to get distorted, but a new one due to the erroneous connections which can alter the human memory. Research shows that our brain context related memories nearby the schema and all the separate memory traces are stored in the ignorance. Since the neurons with similar memories are stored are located close to one another, the complicated interconnections in the schema can get distorted and cause a mix up of these memories. The theory of Conflabulous and priming. The human brain and the human memory is also prone to creating confabulations. These are subconscious distortions or mistakes of certain memories, which can usually occur when the brain tries to fill in the missing data and incomplete memories. It's not like the brain is trying to fill in the blanks regarding a certain event or memory. Oh, it is like. It is like the brain's trying to fill in the blanks regarding certain chain of event memory, which is not necessarily true and a representation of what happened. That this is being examined in many psychology books and publications, including the Journal of the Applied Psychology. Also, we humans may actually make ourselves believe that, that a certain false memory is true with our own personal beliefs and emotions, as well as by new information and details by which we have gathered later on. This is a common occurrence with people who have suffered some types of brain damage, suffer from Alzheimer's, or even completely healthy folks, especially as they get older. The theory of priming is another possible explanation for the strain phenomenon, also known as the Mandela Effect. It is also known as suggestibility or presupposition. I 
can't say that, sorry. And includes a multi multitude of factors that can affect the way we remember certain events. One of the main examples of this occurring is when witnesses in the court are being asked questions with specific details that they can falsely affect their replies. Asking suggestive questions, which include a potential answer, such as, did you see the blue sedan, rather ask, than asking, did you see a blue sedan, may evoke a different memory and response. Also, asking someone, do you remember how tall he was, or do you remember how short he was, could definitely invoke different answers because of the suggestibility of the question asked. The theory that the internet affects our memories. No doubt, with the advent of the internet, we have all been affected by a lot of the information and disinformation that we can find on the World Wide Web. It has also affected how we remember events and things due to the powerful and instantaneous ability of false information misconceptions being spread throughout the planet. This is one of the most likely reasons why there have been more people who believe they have been affected by the Mandela Effect. Think about all the groups and outlying communities which get together to back discuss the numerous falsehoods and fake news or disinformation being spread. They support each other and actually come up with evidence that their actual beliefs are real and true, including specific event references, memories and others. The online hoaxes can be funny and ridiculous, but they may also be very harmful and dangerous when they get out of hand. You can take, the t take a look at the data available regarding the Mandela Effect examples. We have provided and you can see how many people believe that their false memories are true and that the truth has been distorted for one reason or another later on in time. How to recognize whether you're experiencing a Mandela effect. If you are still not sure whether your memory has been affected by this mysterious phenomenon, here are some of the telltale signs that you may actually be one of the many people who have been affected by this phenomenon. You have a memory of a word or image that is spelled or depicted slightly different other than it was originally. You and other people remember a certain event or a fact mistakenly. You find out that you have a false memory thanks to research and asking other people or sources you can rely on. You realize you have distorted memories or experience false contextualizing. Is experience the Mandela effect dangerous? If you are worried because you recognize yourself as one of the growing number of people who have been affected by the effect of the above mentioned examples, then you can rest assured because if you are wrong, about one or more of the items and the examples on our list, then this is more of a fun fact rather than something to be worried about. The potential danger of the Mandela effect is due to the large fact thanks to the internet. False misconceptions can spread around the globe very easily and quickly, and when these misconceptions can lead to the human history and lives of people, can affect, sorry, the human history and lives of people, it can lead to panic and negative views on the actual facts. This is why we've been consistently warned about fake news and the most leading social networks and news websites are doing their best to reduce and completely stop the spreading of such news which may cause serious alarm and can have some history altering consequences in some extreme cases. This is why I've been thinking, could it be a psyop, like the whole term be a psyop because it's been around a long time before this Fiona Broom. But how did she get to put her name to it all of a sudden, you know? It's, yeah. I mean, are they going to use this later on in the future to, like, um, censor the internet so they can stop misconception before it gets too far? Like, are they going to use this as an example of people's um, preconceptions and minds and say, well, this is what happened in a study that we've been doing for the last 10 years? This is what I feel that they're doing. As for the alternate parallel universe theory, universe theory, it sounds fascinating and being mentioned in quantum physics, but finding a way to verify the existence of parallel universes and different realities is still not possible to be scientifically proven. So the psychological and neurological reasoning behind the occurrence in the Mandela effect seems to be the most plausible one at the moment. Final words. You've probably landed on this site after reading the article because of an internet search regarding the Mandela effect, right? Well, you're not alone. The phenomenon has taken over the world with different communities, groups online discussing their theories behind the reason for the strange effect. One of the other things about this effect is if you spend every waking moment of your free time on this Mandela, you're not focusing on what you should be doing in... Um, growing your soul, um, learning what you should know in the Bible and how 
to live that sort of life. You're just focusing on one thing. Whether you're fascinated by the idea um, of the existence of multiverse universes or alternative relatives, realities and universes, or you're more interested in the scientific and psychological causes behind the occurrence of these collective false memories, the Mandela Effect is a subject that will keep the world talking for a long time. Hopefully, there will be a more scientific research in the future regarding this phenomenon so that we can find out what the reason behind it actually is. And that's what makes me question, is it a psyop? Until then, enjoy exploring more about the Mandela Effect and testing your own memory with a large list of common examples we have provided for it. So yeah, if you're still with me, thank you. I want to say thank you to all the subscribers that have been um, supporting me the last few days amongst all this strife that's been going on. I really do appreciate your help and the truth will always come out because a lie cannot sustain. The truth is always stronger. So... Thank you very much. Wherever you are in the world, raise your vibrations. God bless. Much love. Bye now.